good? Yeah, there we go. Hey, you go away for vacation, all of a sudden you forget how to do stuff. Uh, goodness. <laughs> Grace and peace to you today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, today is a, a very wonderful day, not just because the weather is actually not terribly hot, but it, it's a day where we get to gather together to worship, to praise God, and to to just be together as a family, and so I'm excited about that, especially after being gone for two weeks. You do not even know how much it has uh, been hard uh, to be away. Uh, in fact, the, the, the first Sunday uh, we were gone, I cried through half the service because I just wasn't with you guys, and I knew what was going on, and I missed you all, and it was just, it was hard. Um, but we're here now. And, and we are ready to uh, worship God together. So uh, join with me as we say the, the call and response in Psalms 111. Uh, as always, you are the yellow text, so say it with me. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He, proves, he provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of the covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works. He has gathered in the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy and tr are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let us pray today. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of this redeeming work and to work to follow daily in the blessed steps of the, his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Um, we're going to start off our worship um, in song this morning with Waymaker, um, as he is our Waymaker, our miracle worker our promise keeper. So join with me. Um, feel free to stand if you want. You can also sit down.
you guys can pass the peace of Christ to one another. Um, if you don't want to get up and walk around, you can just wave from a distance or whatever you're most comfortable with.
comes on the way But with joy our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk along Carried by your constant grace Held within your perfect peace Never once, no we never walk alone Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did we lead us on alone You are faithful, God, you are faithful Every step we are breathing in your grace Never more will be breathing in your grace You are says you guys can be seated um just scars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say um we were never told that this life was easy and um that we wouldn't have scars and struggles but we aren't left alone and um we're very thankful that god is always there for us amen uh, i'd have a uh, couple different announcements. Uh, one, I have to say, because I don't have a slide for it, and Amy will be mad at me if I don't, um, is we have eggs. We have lots of eggs. I think we have like 18 dozen eggs in the fridge. So before you leave, take some eggs, please. Um, our egg guy, it's always good to have an egg guy. Um, he, he has so many, and he just keeps giving them to us. And so please take them and enjoy them. Make some omelets, a frittata, some scrambled eggs, some poached eggs, some eggs benedict, whatever you want to do. Just, just take some eggs, please. Uh, take some eggs, if you, even if you don't need any, but if you know your neighbor needs some, uh, take them uh, and just make sure that you uh, share the love. Uh, this was supposed to be uh, Kay's announcement, but she's doing the more important task. I think she skipped out on it. I think she's hiding because she didn't want to come up here, um, but... We are having an all-church leadership brunch and planning. This is for everyone. If this is your first time being here or if it is your hundred thousand millionth time being here, it doesn't matter. This is for you. You don't have to be a member. In fact, we encourage people who aren't members to come to this because basically what we are going to do is on September 25th, it's a Saturday, at 9.30 in the morning, we're going to have breakfast the church is going to provide eggs and pancakes. You guys can bring some other stuff to, to pass around. And we're going to get together as a church family and say, hey, what do we want to do in the next couple of months? What's some stuff that's on our hearts? We, we're going to be going into the fall and winter time. What do we want to do? What, what ways do we want to care for people? Do we want to do a Christmas program? Do we want to, uh, whatever it may be. And that's just going to be a time for all of us to gather together and share what's on our hearts and minds and what we want to do to continue to love and reach out to people and to uh, uh, make life great here. So put that on your calendar and please come to it. It's going to be a great time. Um, women's Bible study is going to be here Wednesday at uh, 6 in the Fellowship Hall. Sorry, I forgot what time. Uh, so women, you're invited to that. Uh, and then also the youth group is taking a vacation until after Labor Day, till the 12th so, of September, yes. So, uh, so no youth group until then. And uh, a reminder, because we had this, but then we did a whole bunch of construction, and then it kind of disappeared. We want you all to be aware there's a, a, a Be Blessed pantry that we're hoping to expand, as well as the library with books that you can check out uh, across from the women's bathroom. There's no door anymore. You just walk in and 
feel free to uh, take what you want. Uh, it's right there for you, so uh, have at it. Uh, a reminder about giving. There are many ways, including online, through the mail, and the box in the back that you can give to Alma Church of Nazarene. One important thing that I want to make note of is that we had a special need come up. Um, one of the girls that Pastor Jessica works with every week, Evan, um, she is type 1 diabetic, and she had a keto, ketone acidosis, which is basically a really bad thing where you get ketones in your bloodstream too much, and it's acidic and yeah, it's bad, and uh, she got rushed down to DeVos Hospital, um, and so we are going to, as a church, be getting a, a gas card for the family. If you would like to help with that, um, you can give, and just like if you're writing a check, write um, gas card on the, the memo so that Kay knows what that goes for, uh, and we're going to be getting that to the family to help them as they travel back and forth between here and Grand Rapids to be with their daughter. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to pray over the, the offering. This was, this was something that was given to me, an idea um, from a, a fellow pastor uh, so that you guys can participate if you want. There's no, you don't have to, for the, at least for the first couple of weeks. I'm just going to kind of read this myself, but uh, feel free to read this with me as, as we pray a, a prayer of thanksgiving for the offering. Oh God, we are taught to give as an act of faithfulness. We are reminded that giving is a Christian response. Like Paul taught the early Christians, we are taught to be careful how we live, to live as wise people. Yet, sometimes we are drawn by the insufficient promises of our everyday culture. We end up giving with a begrudging attitude, a hesitant heart, or selfish reluctance, forgive us. Enable us in this very moment to give thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Well, we have our first reading today from Pastor Jessica. Those were a lot of announcements. I kept thinking, when's it my turn? Oh, there's so many. Our first reading this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, in chapter 3, verses 3 through 14. Then David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned 40 years over Israel, 7 years in Hebron, and 33 in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his rule was firmly established. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the statutes of his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued his, this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked this, for this and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never, so that there have never been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, 
both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. This is the word of the Lord, and together we say, thanks be to God. We're gonna continue. It's so quiet. <laughs> We're gonna continue with the with our worship and song this morning. With great is thy faithfulness. Um, it's number forty four in your hymnal. If you want to follow along there, or obviously you can read it up on the slides. <laughs> John 6, verses 51 through 58. 
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Together we say, thanks be to God. Um, our fourth song this morning is probably new to most of you. They might play it on the radio, I don't really know. But um, we, we sang this at family camp. Uh, it must be about a month ago now that we were there. Um, and it's been, like, stuck in my head forever since then. But I love it. The other songs this morning, uh, we sang about great is his faithfulness and never once did he ever leave us alone. Um, and this song has a similar theme to it. It's called Another in the Fire. Um, and and just referencing the, the story of... Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Sorry, my brain doesn't work very well these days. But um, <laughs> in the fire, and they weren't alone. There was another in the fire. Um, and so just going on with that, with that theme and just giving thanks that God is always there for us. Um, so join with me if you know it. If you don't, that's okay. You can sit and listen or catch on or, you know, whatever. Um, so we're going to sing Another in the Fire. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way where the walls are closing in. space between where I used to be and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever across the best of burden where another died for me there is another in the fire Oh, 
many of you are tired this morning? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, Amy's always tired because she's pregnant, so, and it's not even like it gets better once she gives birth, because then you're just taking care of the baby and stuff, so, yeah, it's, it's one of those mornings, I don't know how everyone's doing, but it's, it's one of those mornings, I was up at two o'clock this morning, uh, since, uh, Hearing about that girl Evan and everything, it was just it was on my heart, and so uh, was up praying for her, for the church, and for everything. And uh, it's yeah. So let's just not let's not feel bad if we're just kind of feeling this way. I want us to begin embracing. That. I've, I'm reading again a book called Present Over Perfect, um, a very girly book. Um, it's it's good. It's it's very good. Um, it's it's targeted towards women. Uh, Amy has it, but it's a very good book and has a lot of good points. And uh, so I've been reading that uh, to try to recalibrate myself again. And I want us to be I want us to be present. I want us as Christians, as a church, to be present. We don't have to be perfect. Uh, one, it's 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 a vain attempt to try to be perfect. But even more so, I want us to be present because. What means more is not whether or not you've been perfect all your life, but whether you've been present in other people's lives. That's what people remember when you were there for them. What was the song we just sang? There's another in the fire, being present. That, that's how even God shows up, is being present within our lives. And that means a whole lot. So uh, let's just focus on, on the present. And I'm sure some of this is going to change uh, my sermon a bit, but that's okay too. Um, we, we've been working through Ephesians for the past couple of weeks, and uh, I, I have not heard Pastor Jessica, although y'all are here, so she must not have done a too terrible job, and, and I'm grateful for that. She's amazing. Now that she's district licensed, she gets to do all that extra fun stuff, um, and, and it's, it, 
so we've been working through Ephesians. She took the last two Sundays. The first couple of weeks has all been more of, of a very intellectual focus of how we should think as Christians. But now we are shifting. Last week began that shift, and this week really moves it even more into more of a, an, a hands-on approach. This is how you be a Christian. This is what you do. It's not so much how you think, but it's how you act. And, and so this is where Paul begins his shift in the letter to, to move them from just thinking about it to doing something about it. And so we're going to be reading together in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Go ahead and uh, turn there if you want to. If you are able, I ask that you please stand for the reading of God's Word today as we read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. It says this, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord, and together we say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, as we dive into your word today, as we look at what this text has to tell us, speak to us. Holy Spirit, open our ears and our minds that we may embrace this text and the change that you call from us so that we might continue to live more and more like you. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We asked this on social media, and we got a couple of responses. I know not everyone's on social media, and that's okay. Um, I have social media, and I still don't hardly ever use it. Um, but we asked, what are you grateful for? So I'm going to ask again, because I want to hear some people. What are you grateful for this past week, this past month, this past year? What are you grateful for? Children, do you have anything you're grateful for? No, they're coloring. They're busy. I don't know why I poked the bees in us. Let them be. Uh, what are we grateful for? Grateful for friends. That's a good one. Yeah, we like having friends. It's, it's good to have friends, especially friends who are there. I'm grateful for the fact that I have a house. I am grateful for the fact that I have a family who loves me. This uh, past week, I spent one of my lunches here, and I walked down the blocks, and I was walking around and, and praying, and I was giving thanks to God for everything. Gratitude is something that people have studied out a lot. There, if you were to search uh, studies on giving thanks or gratitude, you will find a whole bunch of research that shows quantitatively that those people who are more thankful, those people who, who give thanks, who show gratitude, live longer, healthier, fulfilling lives than those who don't. I thought that was very interesting. Now, as Christians, we need something more than that because it's not just good enough to say, well, we want to live good, healthy, long lives, so we're going to be thankful. We need some reason that God has given us to live a life that is filled with thanks. Luckily, we have that because that is the core of, of what we are talking about today in the book of Ephesians is this idea of giving thanks. And, and so I want us to look at that from this perspective. Now, the problem with giving thanks is that we have to be careful in which way we are giving thanks. Because, well... I can say, man, I'm so thankful that I'm good-looking. It's not true. 
I'm so thankful that I'm wealthy. It's not true. Uh, I'm so thankful that I'm big and strong. It's still not true. Uh, you know, but we can, we can have all these things that, I, oh, I'm so thankful that I'm amazing. I'm so thankful I'm awesome at my job. I'm, I'm so thankful, whatever it may be. The problem with that kind of gratitude, if you can even call it that, is that it's, it is so inward focused and it is so fleeting. Your appearances can change. Your finances can change. Your strength can fail. Your ability to, to think, to do work can disappear. None of that is something that it is long-lasting. And so the very first thing that I really want us to, to think about is the fact that as we become people who are filled with the Spirit, as we seek God, as we allow the Holy Spirit to abide in us more and more, God is inviting us to live a life of gratitude. And He's doing that not to keep our focus on us, but to keep our focus on God. When we give thanks, we must learn to give thanks to God. As it says in verse 20, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, when we give thanks to God, all of a sudden our attention is turned outward. No longer is it about what I have done. No longer is it about what I have, but it's about what God has done. It's about what God has given. It's about what God is doing. Now, this gets tricky, though, because we have bad things that happen in our lives, right? How many of you have had something bad happen? Yes, okay. That makes it tricky because we're, we're sitting here, and now we could have this sick, twisted thought where we say, okay, when you find out that you have cancer, you have to give God thanks. When, when you get in that horrible car accident, you have to give God thanks. When you get unemployment, you have to give God thanks. That's not quite right. That's not where we're going at with this idea of giving thanks to God at all times and for everything. Rather, again, it's like this song where we are giving thanks because we know that God is with us. We are giving thanks because we know that God is being faithful through the troubles. We give God thanks because He is walking with us. He has not abandoned us. We know that there will come an end to it. We know that God is helping us to come out of the troubles. I was talking to um, a lady at the camp, and I was sharing all the different stuff that I was going through medically, and, and she looked at me, and, and she was, she's, she's this great lady, uh, uh, a black lady over from Saginaw. Uh, they're starting a church over in Saginaw, and, and she was talking about this place that serves fried chicken and all that stuff, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to go and meet with you sometime and try to have some food with you, because that sounds delicious. The only problem is, is that I can't eat gluten or corn anymore, and she looks at me and says, oh, honey, Oh, 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 bless your soul. Oh, honey. Oh, God have mercy. Uh, like, she was like, I don't know how you live right now because of this. She's like, you are so far in a valley. It must be so dark for you. <laughs> and I said, yes. And she said, but don't worry because God is with you. God is going to bring you out of that valley. And it's one of those reminders that we give thanks because God is with us still even when the hardships come, even when it's difficult. Now, we have this weird section right here in verse 18 where it talks about getting drunk with wine because that's debauchery, and, and then, but instead of being filled with the Spirit. And I want us to clarify this because this isn't, this isn't what you might think because, uh, well, we, we don't have the same context as we do uh, back then. When people got together to worship gods, little case G gods, uh, a lot of times they involved drinking, and a lot of drinking, uh, especially if you belong to the cult of Dionysus, who was the god of wine. They would drink a lot because they believed that that was the way of, of celebrating and worshiping that god, and so they would get crazy drunk, and they believed that, that in that state of inebriation, they were somehow brought to a higher level of understanding the gods 
and, and worshiping them and giving them thanks and all this stuff. And here in Ephesus, they had this problem. They had these, these cults, these different religions who were pushing people to do that. And so some of the Christians who were coming out of those religions had these practices. They said, well, if we want to worship God, we're going we're gonna to get drunk. And he's saying, no, don't fill yourself with things of the world. Fill yourself with the Spirit. If you want to truly give thanks, if you truly want to live this, this life of gratitude, you need to fill yourself with the Spirit every day. You, you get rid of these things of the world. You don't fill yourself with accomplishments. You don't fill yourself with, with national pride. You don't fill yourself with, with drugs or alcohol. You don't fill yourself with, with vain uh, aspirations of who you are. You, you don't fill yourself with those things because they will not bring out the true life of gratitude. Instead, fill yourself with the Spirit. And so that's the challenge for us today, to look into our own lives and to, to say, okay, what have we been filling our lives with? That's why I'm, I'm reading that book again, Present Over Perfect. What have I been filling my life with? What have I been trying to bring in to, to make it wonderful, but really has been distracting and how can I allow God to come back into my life? What things can I bring back in the through, through prayer, through scripture reading, through, oh, whoa, let's see here. Psalms, reading psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, as you're singing, making melody, both with people and in your heart. That's a great way to be filled with spirit. How, how can you not be thinking about God when you're singing these songs? And so we incorporate these things into our lives to help us be filled so that out of us comes this gratitude for God. Now, as we do this, as we give thanks, our lives are changed to be more and more like Christ. Our lives are changed to act as Christ would act, and this is something that we see here, kind of. Now, the, I love the lectionary; it does a lot of great things, but for some reason, it skips over so much, because next week, we're talking about putting on the whole armor of God, and I love that, but if you look, there's a good section that is skipped between verse 20 and chapter 6, verse 10, and there's a lot there that we need to do. Verse, uh, verse 5, chapter 21 through 6, 9 is the exact way we can live a life full of gratitude. Because as we live this life, as we thank God for everything, we begin to see people in a different way. We begin to understand the situations we're in in a, in a different light. And so the things that used to bother us, the people who used to annoy us, they don't do that anymore because we have our hearts filled with this gratitude. And so we act differently, or we should act differently. We should act more and more like Christ. And this is where then it comes in, and he begins with the Christian household. Something I want to make very, very, very clear is verse 21. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. All of this, all, all of what comes after this, because I know that these texts sometimes have been used and abused in ways that are just are not uh, the best. Everything we as Christians, we subject ourselves to one another out of reverence for Christ. And as you are living that grateful life, wives, you're going to be respectful to your husbands. Because that's undoing the sin that we see in Genesis with Adam and Eve, where the wife wants to overpower the husband because of the fall. And husbands... Notice you have a whole lot longer of a section. You're going to love your wives just as Christ loved the church, which is undoing the sin of the fall where Adam is in authoritative power over his wife. 
children, you're going to obey your parents. Yeah, that means when they say something, you're going to do what they ask you. You're not going to back talk. You're, you're not going to be mad about it. I know, that's not fun. I'm getting all sorts of bad looks. Parents! Now, it says, it says fathers, but, but let's be real here. We have both fathers and mothers who do this now because of how we live. Parents, don't provoke your children to anger. Don't do things just to make them mad. Don't set them up for failure. Slaves, or what I would call now employees, be respectful to your masters, your bosses. I'm getting a weird chuckle there, man. I, I know you're self-employed and you have a whole bunch of people under you, so I don't know where that's going. But uh, <laughs> Masters, self-employed owners of businesses, show love and hospitality. Hosp uh, hospitality to your slaves, to your employees, to the people who work under you. These are how we demonstrate a life filled with giving thanks to God by how we treat others. Because as we are changed, as we witness it, we, we pour it out to other people. We cannot be unchanged by it. As I was studying all this out, I was thinking heavily about my grandfather. Uh, this is actually his tie, um, and, and I wore it today because of all of that. Uh, you could tell that my grandfather was a man who gave thanks to God all the time. Not because he talked about it. In fact, I honestly, I can't point to a whole lot of conversations I had to him about God specifically. But the way he lived, the way he treated me, the way he treated my parents, my siblings, other people, that, that showed me far more than what I could have had as a conversation piece. He was one who, oh, if you were eating with him, he would grab food and put it on your plate and say, here, have some more. He wanted to make sure you were well fed. He wanted to make sure you had what you needed. He would go and mow your yard if you needed it. He would give you the tomatoes that he would grow all, all the way up to the top of the roof of his garage because he loved getting the plants so stinking high that you couldn't even pick the tomatoes. I mean, it, it, he just, he extruded this this life of gratitude because of what God had done for him. And it has affected many lives because of it. That's for us today. So start simple. Start simple. Uh, there's many ways to do it. In fact, we were just walking around Target the other day, grocery shopping, and if you go into the card section, and it's kind of like the cards and office supply section, there's a tree, and it's called a gratitude tree, and it's a little wooden tree with little slots, and they give you a whole bunch of little leaves, and they say, write something that you're thankful for and put it on the leaf and, and stick it on the tree. So if, if you're one of those people who you like having that or that's, that clicks with how you learn and grow, go to Target and get it. It wasn't really expensive, and, and start writing out the things that you're grateful for. If you're a journaler, Keep a journal, and every day, write down one person, one thing that you are grateful for, one thing that you see God doing, and say, I'm grateful for this. Find a way every day to give thanks to God, and as you do that more and more, you will find your life changed in ways of how you respond to people, how you react to situations. It will change who you are because you are allowing the Spirit to fill you more and more. And so as we go now into prayer time, uh, I, want us, I want us to give thanks. Now, we have a lot to pray for. We have a lot of prayer requests. My goodness. Um, 
We need to continue to pray for Kristen and her family uh, as they're looking for a new car because of the car crash last week. We need to pray for Mike uh, with his eyes. He has another surgery on his eyes. Uh, for the, the girls that Pastor Jessica works with every week, uh, they're, they're working through some hard stuff and they need prayer. Richard's hip is cracked worse than what the doctors originally thought, and so he's in a lot of pain. I know Zane had a dentist appointment last week that they had to go, and it was fairly serious. They had to put him out. Um, and uh, there is another person, uh, Rosalie, who uh, her brother is in critical condition in the hospital. And obviously, uh, Evan, the girl that we were talking about earlier, who's down in Grand Rapids. We need to pray for these people. We need to lift them up. And I don't want us to be distracted from that as we pray, but I also want us to, to be able to give thanks to God for, for what is happening in our lives. Give thanks to God for the, the beautiful community garden we were able to get going so quickly. I mean, relatively, uh, for, for what time frame we had to give God thanks for the weather today, to give God thanks for something. So as we pray, let us embrace this heart of gratitude. Now, I know Mike had asked that I anoint him with some oil, so I'll go ahead and, and do that. And so let us pray today to God for all these things. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this day, of what you have given us. And we pray right now specifically for Mike, uh, and we anoint him in your, in your name, Father, that you would bring healing to him, help him as he awaits the surgery on his eye. Bless the doctors, give them steady hands, and help Mike with any anxiety and fear that may creep up. May you give him comfort. As well as uh, Rosalie, this lady that he knows, and, and his brother, her brother that is, is very sick. We pray for healing, Lord, and, and comfort in this time as, as the outlook is, is not great. And we ask for your, your ultimate healing. We give you thanks, Lord, because we know that there is, there is a hope that extends beyond death. There is a hope that extends beyond sickness. And even when we are, are walking through the, the ultimate valley of, of death, you are still with us and you can bring us to it. And so we ask, Lord, that you comfort them now as they are walking through this valley. We continue to pray for all these people that have uh, cancer, the, the people who are taking the different chemo treatments. We ask, Lord, that you, you give them the strength that they need, and we, and we give you thanks that they are able to have this medicine that helps them as, as much as it is a difficult process. We give you thanks that Kristen and her children were safe in spite of the car accident and that their car is still semi-functional while they look for a new one. We give you thanks that Richard is okay and that he is able to get out and we pray for continued healing for his hip. We give you thanks for placing us here in this moment. Help us to embrace, to embody this life of gratitude. Fill us, O Holy Spirit, so that we might be a people who give thanks and, and demonstrate it every day to, to our spouses, to our friends, to our children, to our co-workers, to our neighbors. Help us, Lord. You must shake your head at our ways, keeper of the covenant. How can we say we want wisdom when we foolishly squander the knowledge we have of your ways? How can we claim to follow you when we walk the slippery roads of the world, not caring where they lead us? How can we desire your great and steadfast love when the simple seductions of our society are in full view every day? How can you have mercy on such unwise and unfaithful people? Perfect wisdom. Yet that is exactly what you do 
and our greed turns to gratitude, our pettiness to praise, our tantrums to thanksgiving, our hope and joy become our blessing through the one we call our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, and we pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we give thanks, as we think about this, I want us to turn our attention to the table with the bread and the juice and this idea of giving thanks is one that Christ demonstrated for us as he sat with his disciples and even more so as he uh, gave himself up. The John passage, my body and blood is the bread and drink. Give thanks for it. We, we have to give thanks to God for the sacrifice made that gives us life. And so Christ our Lord invites us to his table. All who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us prepare our hearts to be God's sanctuary. God of great and steadfast love, we thank and praise you because you open your life that we may abide in you. You called Abraham and made your home in the midst of the people whom you had chosen. A great people, so numerous they could not be numbered or counted. In Jesus, son of David, you walked before us in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart. And you were crowned him king and ushered in a reign that has no end. And in your grace, you invite us to gather around his heavenly throne, joining all the company of heaven, singing your unending hymn of glory. You may say it with me. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Ever-present God, through meals you show your people your faithfulness in the wilderness, your persistence in times of famine, and your will to be our companion forever. Your son shared a meal the night before he died for our salvation, and on the day he rose for our redemption. Send your Holy Spirit on your people, that those who eat the flesh of your Son and drink his blood may have eternal life. Sanctify this bread and this wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, and broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Steadfast God, you offered your servant Solomon any gift he needed to take up the mantle of leading your people. When he chose an understanding mind, able to discern between good and evil, you gave him also those things for which he had not asked. You bestow on us so much more than we desire or deserve. Send upon your people the gift of your wisdom, that your children may know the paths that lead to peace. Your church may be renewed in the ways of gentleness, and your kingdom may come near in grace and truth. Build up rulers and leaders in the virtues of discernment and mercy. Show your face to those who ache for your overturning day of reversal, and hasten the coming of your just and righteous reign, triune God 
now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. So as you are ready, when your heart allows, come forward and receive the elements and give thanks to God for the sacrifice that was made. As we close today, let us give thanks to God in song yet again by singing how good he is, how faithful he is, how loving he is.
Go forth into the world, trusting with your hearts the wisdom God bestows upon all who seek to follow God's will. When called to lead, do so with humility and confidence in God. Be in this world a sign of Jesus' presence. Share compassion with all whom you encounter. Live wisely in God's name and glorify God in all you do. And may the grace, mercy, and wisdom of God be our support guidance and strength for this day forward and forevermore. Amen and amen. Go in the grace of God. God bless you and thank God for children. <laughs>